I hope you are all doing well. Um, I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for asking. Today we're going to be looking at the lytic and lysogenic cycles of bacteriophages. So let's get started. All right, so let's start with the lytic cycle. Uh, and this is going to be one for virulent phages. So this means bacteriophages that are very active uh, and not dormant at all, which we will see in the lysogenic cycle. So just as a reminder, a bacteriophage is like a virus that is going to typically attack a bacteria hence bacteria in bacteriophage. So let's go through the steps one by one. As you can see, I've labeled them one through five here. So our little uh, bacteriophage is the one that looks like a little, little man. And our, cir our oval is our bacteria, as you can recognize it by its circular chromosome, which I've drawn for you in blue. And our bacteriophage has a red single-stranded uh, genome. I d it just happens to be single-stranded. I drew it like this. It doesn't really matter. Anyways, so first of all, the bacteriophage is going to attach itself onto the external membrane of our bacteria. Then the phage DNA or genome uh, is going to penetrate inside the cell and it's going to um, degregate the host DNA. If you remember in my horizontal gene transfer video, uh, we looked at this as well. In step three, there's going to be synthesis of the virus genome and its proteins, and this is using the host machinery, enzymes, you know, everything it would, the cell would normally use to replicate its own DNA, to create its own proteins. The virus is going to use that to do it for himself. Step four is the assembly of the heads, tail, and caudal fibers. Uh, since it's maybe not obvious for you, I've drawn a little diagram underneath of what each body part means for a bacteriophage. And step five is liberation. So the phage is going to produce enzymes that digest the cell wall, and this leads to the explosion and, unfortunately, death of the bacteria cell. And all these little phages are going to escape into the environment and repeat this process with a new bacteria cell. This whole cycle takes about 30 minutes and 100 to 200 phages can be produced. So I will imagine each of those 200 phages goes to attack a new cell producing another 200 phages. It's hence why viruses uh, can spread so quickly. Okay, so that was the lytic cycle, relatively straightforward, and now let's move on to the lysogenic. So for the lysogenic cycle, this is for temperament phages, uh, which is phages that are going to be quite dormant. As you can see, I've drawn a integration of the lytic and lysogenic cycle, kind of so you understand how these two are linked. So let's start um, where certain factors determine, so the middle uh, the, the middle cell, whether you're going to enter into the lysogenic or the lytic cycle. So we've already seen the lytic cycle, so let's say that certain factors make it so that we enter into the lysogenic cycle. So as you can see, the bacteriophage has already integrated its genome into the cell, but it's just there for now. It's not destroying anything uh, if we go into the lysogenic. It's actually going to integrate itself into the host genome. So we're going to call the viral DNA dormant because it is not expressing itself, it is not destroying the cell, it is just integrated into the host genome. And why does it do, do this? Because the bacteria, who doesn't notice, is going to reproduce normally, copying the, what we call prophage, which is the phage that is inside the genome of the host, um, and transmitting it to its daughter cells. So we're going to have a huge replication of bacteria and with each bacterial replication the phage is going to be reproduced so this is another way of replicating the virus except this time it's going to be done without directly destroying the cell after a large number of cycles because obviously those bacteria daughter cells are them are also going to reproduce and since they all uh, have the phage they're going to transmit the genome of the phage to their uh, well, granddaughter cells, I guess you could say. So now we have our daughter cell that's containing a prophage. What's going to happen is the viral DNA is going to get out of the host cell DNA 
And here we come back to our ju junction point. Either it's just going to stay as it is and recopy itself uh, as a dormant DNA, or the DNA is going to become active and we're going to enter into the lytic cycle. So I hope you understood the difference between the two. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. If you have any suggestions or you would like me to, to talk about a particular subject, whether it be chemistry, physics, math, or biology, I would love to help you out with that. Till then, stay safe and happy learning.